छोटी जो
Hello. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I, Dr. Poonam Joshi, uh, invite you uh, this. Uh, thank you all for attending today's uh, Saturday Actrack Hadenek uh, Academic Program. Today's lecture will be taken by uh, Dr. Uh, Amit Joshi. He is a professor uh, in Department of Medical Oncology, uh, Tata Mural Hospital, Mumbai. Uh, so I would request Dr. Amit to go ahead with the presentation. Oh, thank you, uh, everyone. And I think uh, today's topic is a little bit uh, Hello, your different. voice is Hello? not, you are not audible, Dr. Amit. Hello. Yeah, yeah, is, it, huh. is it audible now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my today's topic is a little bit different from the uh, 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 what, what you people have heard uh, previously. So um, uh, it's a more for a important for a radiation oncologist perspective and medical oncologist perspective. But definitely since the most of the time in adjuvant therapy, patient may follow with the operating surgeon those two. So they should know what are the important points uh, whenever we give post-CTRT and what are the cares that patient requires at least the immediate post-CTRT uh, period. And some important aspect regarding the mortality pattern in these patients, uh, because we have uh, treated with this uh, patient with surgery, chemo radiation, and then how are the morbidity and mortality pattern of these patients? So the, today's topic is immediate post-CTRT care. So the question is, after the end of the radiotherapy and chemotherapy, can patient immediately go back to his native place on the next day? The answer of this question is no. And why it is important, why the patient should not be allowed to go immediately after completion of CT CTRD? That I will explain in subsequent slide. And what are the data uh, regarding this and how to approach various complications which can be seen uh, immediately after post-CTRD? So completion of radio, uh, treatment with the radiotherapy and chemotherapy does not mean the end of the treatment and supportive care for these patients. In fact, at the end of the treatment, all the toxicities are at the maximum grade. So when the patient's uh, CTRT gets completed approximately at the end of six weeks, the toxicity are at their maximum grade. This is because of the cumulative doses of the radiation and the cumulative radiotherapy dose at the end of the tre treatment. That we have to remember that this is the time when the maximum uh, doses of radiotherapy has been delivered and the maximum cycle of chemotherapy six or seven for uh, weekly or three uh, and three cycle for three weekly. So the toxicity, the probability of getting a toxicity is highest at the end of the radiotherapy. So just looking to the various literature how uh, uh, regarding the pattern of toxicities in this group of the patient, uh, definitely with the availability of the newer radiotherapy technologies, the toxicity has come, come down. But this is one of the paper which uh, indicates that even with the use of helical IMRT, uh, that is known as tomotherapy, that is more precise uh, technique for delivering the radiotherapy, the pattern of toxicities in this group of the patient. So previously when these technologies were not there, Patient were used to treat it with the cobalt uh, 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 technique of radiation, where the toxicity are supposed to be further more compared to the more precision technology. But even with the use of newer technologies, the toxicities are still there. So this is one of the paper which um, have studied the pattern of uh, uh, toxicity with the IMRT plus minus concurrent chemotherapy. If you see. Uh, this paper evaluated the data for 212 patients and the toxicity pattern they observed. So look to the towards the toxicity. The, this is the IMRT alone and this group is chemotherapy with IMRT. See the pattern of toxicity, the gyrostomia, the maximum rate of gyrostomia which is seen is around 60% uh, in, in this uh, IMRT alone. But this number significantly jumps to around 81% in chemotherapy with radiotherapy. Similarly, the dysgoesia also increased from 76% to 94%. The pharyngeal mucositis, 29% versus uh, 46%. And definitely, the uh, as the uh, combination of chemotherapy with radiotherapy, the, all the toxicity number goes, goes increases. See the dysphagia, which is maximum grade 3 is seen around 19% patient, but this number significantly jumps to 68%. So that means the patients who are treated with even with IMRT, with chemotherapy, the grade 3 dysphagia uh, number increases to around two thirds of the patient. That means, and it is grade 3, not grade 1. And 
so that means the uh, uh, even with the available newer available technology these patient patients group have a significant toxicity the coming next slide so that uh, uh, i will show the pattern of these toxicities over course of the time so uh, uh, this is an important slide which is uh, uh, showing the pattern so uh, these are the number of the patient in this axis and this this is the week so before uh, the treatment that is week 1 week 2 these are the weeks of treatment of radiation generally the radiation usually continues up to the 6 week and these are the various toxicities which are graded in the different color so if we look few of the important toxicities uh, let's say uh, the uh, uh, gyrostomia so this is the yellow line showing the gyrostomia in the combination of ch plus imrt that is the chemotherapy with imrt so this usually starts as the number of weeks Uh, increases uh, these are the number of weeks so this toxicity usually peaks at around around 6 between 6 to 7 week and this is the time where radiation ends and patient is usually planned to go uh, uh, to their nat 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 native place if they are not from the that uh, place where they are taking chemo radiation so if you look other toxicity like the pharyngeal mucosi mucositis this green line is for a uh, chemo radiation so this uh, also peaks around the 6 to 7 weeks and definitely all the toxicities are more when the chemotherapy is combined with the ra ra uh, ra radiotherapy similarly the the oral mucosis the uh, um, uh, so what I, what i meant to with this graph that as the time of radiation increases so uh, this is the time axis so all the toxicity peaks around 6 to 7 week and then gradually de decreases over the time and if you see the number of toxicity patient so, so that means Uh, the uh, uh, significant number of patient that is more than 50% of the patient and uh, mind these are the maximum grade of toxicity so that means the patient who are receiving chemo uh, chemotherapy with radiotherapy are at higher risk of developing all these grade 4 uh, grade 3 or 4 toxicity compared to the patient who are getting only radiotherapy and even with the latest technology this toxicity number is still not that less and if you see uh, go to the previous technique of uh, treating the patient with the cobalt radiation this number is significantly high so uh, this chart shows the pattern and usually it takes around 12 weeks so the treatment completes at this point of time 6 week and then the all toxicity is gradually in, uh, uh, decreases and uh, most of the time and in some patient even at even after 12 weeks the toxicity uh, uh, still doesn't touch the base baseline but in majority of the patient after 12 weeks the uh, uh, patient uh, the experiences the normal level of uh, life expectancy in, in 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 this patient there is another way of looking the toxicities so this is one of the scale which is being used that is known as functional oral intake scale fois scale so th this is a scale mainly to assess the uh, patient's uh, feeding pattern so in this scale as the number increases so that means the patient the if, if if the score is 1 that is uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, so the patient is not able to take anything orally but as the number increase that uh, that is number 7 that means total oral intake without no restriction so as the number uh, uh, dec uh, decreases the uh, uh, tox the oral intake of this patient that means the Uh, patient having scoring one is not possible to take anything, and patient has to be supplemented with the uh, parental nut 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 nutrition. So why it is important? So next uh, 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 graph is again showing the same pattern. So there are in the same paper they look towards the FOIS uh, that that is functional oral intake scale with chemotherapy and uh, without chemotherapy with I uh, with uh, I IMRT. So similarly in the same uh, they also look towards the dysphagia. So Uh, this score is a better way to look towards the uh, uh, quantification of a dysphagia in these patients who are re uh, receiving the rt or C uh, ct so similarly the uh, fois score and ctc uh, dysphagia more than 2 so this again shows that as and in the same uh, way this is the number of percentage of the patient developing this toxicity over course of time and this is the week of the treatment so fois score again increases over period of time and then around 7 to 10 10 uh, around 6 to 7 week the peak the peak of this is around 6 to 7 week and then over the course of the time this usually com comes comes down and similarly uh, uh, the combination of chemotherapy with radiotherapy has much worsening effect on the 
f y is a score and dsv is a score compared to the rt alone so that means the toxicity usually increases over over the time and peaks around 6 to 7 weeks and then gradually declines over the course of time and usually touches touches the baseline around 12 weeks so uh, these two slides shows the temporary pattern of toxicity with the radiotherapy and chemotherapy so this is another very important point which as a clinician we we, we should uh, uh, remember so uh, 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 there are uh, certain papers who looks towards the non cancer related health events and mortality in head and neck cancer patient so uh, a patient of head and neck cancer when they are they followed over course of the of the time the pattern of their non cancer related health events and the mortality associated with them uh, is been record, rec recorded so this is one of the paper uh, uh, which looks towards the 190 head and neck cancer patients who were treated with either definitive rt or chemo radi radiotherapy so nche is the non cancer related health events that means the patient requiring admission to the hospital not because of the primary tumor which was uh, which was treated because of the some other events and similarly the non cancer mortality that means the uh, the death of the patient is not related directly to the underlying ca 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 cancer or their treatment but is something else so in this paper what they found that and they defined the early non cancer health related events as an event requiring an hospital readmission within 12 months of the treat treatment so what they found that around 33 patients suffered an nche that means around approximately 20% patient required an admission for a for a event which is not directly related to the cancer and around 5% patient succumbed to this event uh, which is known as the non cancer related mortality so that means after a, a completion of the uh, chemo radiotherapy within one year of the uh, uh, treatment around 20% required admission to the hospital unrelated to the underlying cancer and around 5% patient died uh, uh, which is not related to the underlying cancer so so that means this number is substantial and some or other way the treatment which is given to the patient is contributing towards the uh, this non cancer related health events and also the non cancer related mortality in this in this group of the patient within three and then they look up towards the admission pattern for this patient but they found that around 10% patient required an early nche that is within 3 month of the completion of the chemo chemo radiotherapy and most common region for admission was uh, the respiratory problem the uh, cerebrovascular accident and the uh, gi related uh, uh, related so what they concluded that early nche that means early non cancer related health events are a major contributor to the competing and all cause mortality in head and neck uh, cancer patient receiving rt or ctrt so that means the patient is not developing direct complex uh, direct uh, event with the underlying cancer of their treatment some or other way uh, the pa pa patients are getting admission and few of the patient might uh, get uh, getting uh, are are died because of this non cancer related health events this is another paper which looks towards the same in in a bigger number of the patient so around 600 of the consecutive patient who received ctrt they followed over a period of, of uh, around approximately 5 year and what they concluded that around 37 so this is not a very early event but they followed these patients over period of time and what they concluded that around 40% patient has some or other nche that is non cancer re, re, uh, related health events and around 10% patient died because of that so at end the at the end of the paper this is very important what they concluded that the five year index cancer mortality the the second primary cancer mortality and non cancer related mortality so five year, uh, year uh, mortality because of the underlying cancer that means the patient has either recurrence of the disease or relapse of the disease so around 24 percent patient died because of the uh, index cancer related mortality the second primary cancer which is very important in head and neck cancer around 5% patient died because of the second primary cancer their treatment or the metastasis or local complication related to second primary cancer but what is more important for us that around 9% patient died because of the non cancer related mortality and, and some of these mortality can be preventable if we take proper cancer so that means the non cancer related mortality plays an important role in patients who are treated with ctrt and we should be very vigilant and we should be careful because this we cannot control this the uh, uh, index cancer mortality we cannot control the uh, 
the second primary cancer mortality there is just no data to say that anything pre uh, which helps in uh, secondary prevention but definitely this 9% some of them can be uh, prevented and some of them can be treated if we detect earlier and this number is quite a big it's around 10% so uh, so non cancer related mortality is an important cause of mortality in patient who are treated with ctrt and among this non cancer mortality the respiratory events such as pneumonia or dyspnea were most common followed by the uh, the uh, gi related issues so what they concluded that patient with respiratory non cancer health events were at a risk of non cancer mortality than patient with other uh, important so and, and that i will again subsequently explain the uh, various toxicity so that now we we come to two points that the patient of a chemo radiotherapy the toxicity increases over the time seven six to seventh week is the maximum toxicity and then it gradually over a period of time the non cancer related health events and non cancer related mortality is important in these patient and contributes around 10% so that we should remember this number so now coming uh, to the each of this toxicity uh, 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 in in this the dysphagia and aspersenia so i will take only three or four important toxicity which we see immediately post ctrt as we all know the long term complication that is a separate uh, topic of discussion so i will try to take which is important immediately after the completion of ctrt so dysphagia and aspersenia pneumonia so if you look towards the pathogenesis of uh, this aspersion pneumonia and dysphagia so all three are interrelated so if as soon as the chemo radiotherapy starts patient de develops mucositis as the time period increases patient starts developing dysphagia the swallowing mechanism gets disturbed and the patient uh, 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 start started getting aspersion pneumonia so this is a this is a vicious cycle more mucositis more dysphagia more probability of aspersion pneumonia so if we uh, uh, decrease something in this circle we can prevent ultimately the aspersion pneumonia so mucositis leading to the dysphagia dysphagia leading to the aspersion pneumonia and ultimately this is one of the important cause of the non cancer related health event and probably the non cancer related mortality also so uh, this is important to look a uh, uh, few papers related to that so this is one of the largest data set of the patients who are being treated with ctrt and they follow followed up this was published in cancer 2015 so what they took they, they took the data from cr database and they followed the uh, uh, mortality pattern in these a group of the patient from 2009 so around 3513 patients were ident identified and they followed and what they con uh, concluded from their medical record data that one quarter that is around 23% patient developed aspiration pneumonia at a median time of 5 months after initiating treatment so one fourth patient developed aspiration pneumonia which is a very and uh, 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 all we know that so we see quite a lot of patient in on follow up they present with cough fever unexplained weight uh, weight loss unexplained cough and then we when we work up we found that the patient has a some sort of aspersion pneumonia so among 801 patient who experienced aspersion pneumonia 84 patient half of the care unit they they are they were either in hypotension patient may require intensive care for their management after hospital both patients who are admitted aspiration pneumonia out of the the hypotension um, a bacterial uh, patient who required severe disease and around 30 was of there so the aspiration pneumonia was 32% in with the hazard ratio of one. all other the, the aspiration pneumonia common cause of non in patients who are treated with so uh, and then with the in head and neck can is matched cohort of, this is the number and the, uh, this this is the cancer patient red line is for the head and neck cancer 
so as the time increases so that means the and you see the differences in the percentage of patient who are developing so there is a sharp difference so the patient who are treated with head and head and cancer patient they are at far increased risk of aspiration pneumonia compared to the age matched cohort where their number is less than 10 but in head and neck cancer patient it reaches around to 30% in due course of time and see the overall survival so this is the same showing that patient with the uh, of a head and neck cancer patient with aspiration pneumonia there are less chances of developing or dying because because of the, this compared to the patient who develop aspiration pneumonia so the probability of survival decreases in patient who develop aspiration pneumonia this is the blue blue line and patient Where the aspiration pneumonia more probability of dying. So that means the uh, uh, head and neck cancer patients are increased risk of aspiration pneumonia, and those patients who developed aspiration pneumonia are more chances of dying because of the, uh, the complication related to this. This is the another study where, where they look to uh, look towards the all cause of mortality in head and neck can cancer patient. <coughs> so the cancer under this study contributed around forty five percent. Other malignancy twenty seven percent. and unrelated to cancer so that is 30 around 30% and out of this 30% around 20% are aspiration so why i am emphasizing on that that this num we cannot control this number this number uh, but this is among the uh, death related to unrelated to the cancer we can prevent timely if we can detect something and among this unrelated to the cancer aspiration pneumonia is the most important thing similarly the studies looks for the dys dysphagia so this is a few papers which are putting uh, uh, the uh, uh, the rate of dysphagia post ctrd so the uh, various uh, paper ranges the dysphagia that is uh, within uh, after completion of ctrd around 50% patient may develop so um, uh, 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 this is one of the chart or various studies which are showing the aspiration rate in chronic dys dysphagia so the number of aspiration Uh, varies from uh, 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 between diff different studies. Similarly, the uh, time of tissue. So ultimately, patient who develop dysphagia will require some or other way to feed. So uh, the uh, what the term which is used in the oncological setting is the time dependency on tube feeding. After chemo radiotherapy, so th those patients who develop dysphagia. some of them will uh, require a prolonged feeding tube for the uh, there so ultimately what they, the percentage of patient uh, who requires a tube feeding after completion of chemo radiotherapy the number varies from around 20 to 40% in different series so that means after completion of ctrd even though the uh, 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 their toxicity has started coming down but around 20 to 40% patient may require a long tube long time tube de dependency and the number varies from 20 to 40% in various series definitely the patient who are treated with chemo radiotherapy are more chances of de developing the dysphagia and i uh, explained in the previous chart that patient who are developing dysphagia are at more risk of developing the aspiration pneumonia so what are the ways what are the recommendation on management of dysphagia and aspir aspiration so few general point that is and uh, uh, our radiation oncologist colleague they are very uh, they are aware of this thing so whenever the radiation therapy is planned they plan in such a way that the hot spots which are uh, important in the swallowing mechanism that is base of tongue larynx and posterior pharyngeal wall the dose needs to be adjusted so that the uh, the uh, muscles which are responsible for the swallowing will get less radiation so the uh, toxicity to these muscles are less so the swallowing mechanism remains same patients who are on the Uh, radiation they should be uh, taught about the swallowing exercises uh, the, uh, with the saliva flow so uh, uh, re reducing risk of caries and stimulating so this is not very very helpful but definitely the reducing risk for caries the uh, 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 with the availability of newer technology which spares the, um, uh, the salivary gland probably in, uh, maintains the salivary flow which then ultimately leads to, to less, less dysphagia and the most important aspect which we have really Lied over the time is the help of a speech and swallowing specialist, and this so the most important aspect for speech and swallowing specialist is that all patients should be evaluated before, before, during, and after. So it's not that the speech and swallowing specialist should be involved when the dysphagia starts, or uh, ideally they should be uh, involved in the patient's care before starting the radiotherapy. Patients should be uh, sent to them uh, uh, before, during, and completion of radio to start the appropriate exercise and evidence-based swallowing strategies such as supraglottic swallow, the Mendelssohn manual, as well as position and dietary. So there are this is another. 
sub specialty and i think in uh, one of the classes the speech and solving person can be involved to uh, tell them because each and every center would not have this but definitely the treating um, uh, radio uh, radiation oncologist or medical oncologist should uh, 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 explain or tell the patient of some of the basic exercises which helps in preventing the, this, this and the other thing is the delaying feeding or tube placement as long as appropriate so uh, so what we have uh, uh, learned over the peer that uh, uh, the, uh, we should delay as much as possible the uh, putting the patient on um, nasogastric tube. The, uh, we should encourage taking patient orally, and uh, if required, we should consider for a nasogastric uh, feeding tube rather than the gastrostomy feeding tube. So, in current era, as such, uh, placing a prophylactic gastrostomy tube before starting CTRD. So, uh, so try the various trials and data has clearly shown that the. Uh, 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 this has not shown benefit. In fact, the swallowing mechanism those who have completed the who have completed the CTR, uh, CTRT has um, uh, um, uh, with gastrotomy tube has more chances of developing dysphagia on long term compared to the patient who put on a nasogastric feeding. Patient should be allowed. This is very important that even we, if we put the RALS tube, we should tell the patient that they can take the. Uh, or, uh, the uh, oral intake if they can because the, the swallowing mechanism has to be maintained. So if the patient develops that grade of dysphagia uh, 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 or mucositis, then we should stop. Otherwise, even with the feeding tube, we should encourage the patient. If there is no clinical sign of aspiration, we should encourage the patient to take the orally and the supplementation should be done with the uh, nasogastric uh, 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 tube. Similarly, the uh, optimizing the psychological support, pain management, setting the reasonable time-based swallowing step is very important in preventing the um, dysphagia and subsequently aspiration. So these are the some exercises for the uh, 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 strengthening the um, uh, swallowing mus muscles. So I will not go into the detail, but there are various exercises for each group of the, of the, of the uh, muscle, like supra, supra height, muscular L larynx, larynx and the true vocal cord, base of the tongue and posterior. So there are various exercises which have been described and uh, one class can be uh, taken on this aspect uh, in patient, uh, at least for those who do not have a speech and swallowing especially in, in, in there. The other important toxicity after the dysphagia and expression is the mucositis. So as the time in, 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 in increases though, this starts with the arrhythmia, then edema, ulceration, pain. So uh, this is a continuum. And as the time of the CTRT increases, so at the start of this uh, process of a mucositis, initially the arrhythmia, then edema, then ulceration, pain, bleeding. So uh, usually um, at the end of the um, uh, uh, um, uh, period of radiation, this is the gyrostomia, which uh, ultimately, uh, uh, if the, uh, uh, the uh, radiation continues, some patient may develop some mistake. So majority of the patient will develop gyrostomia grade, out, grade two or three after end, end of the, and definitely the mucositis will have a, a direct impact on the quality of the care. So as I told you, oral mucositis develops in around 80% of the patient and definitely the incidence of oral mucositis is especially high in patients who are treated with chemotherapy uh, uh, along with the radiotherapy as the dose increases. So uh, if it is goes over uh, 50 grade, the, talk, uh, the mucositis percentage increases and those who are treated with ultra fractionation and definitely the maximum time of developing the mucositis is end of the uh, treatment. So the management, there is as such no uh, drugs uh, or there is no way to prevent that just uh, the, or, or, or to treat it the best way is to prevent so maintenance of a good oral hygiene very important a uh, patient should be told about the uh, importance of a mouth cleaning so soft gel uh, soft baby toothbrush are uh, 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 patient should be uh, brush the tooth twice day with, with the baby toothbrush so there should be no deposit no debris a huge of a oral so this is very important that uh, the uh, commercially available iodinated preference should not be used the best way is to uh, for oral solution is the saline or soda bicarbonate which we use a lot in our our setting or a mixture of both, the marketed preparation of iodinated or alcohol content should not be used. It further increases the irritation and the toxicity related to the consumption of spice, food, tobacco, alcohol should be minim minim minimized and the adequate amount of hydration is very, very important in this, this group of the patient. Similarly, 
as the mucosity increases the patient de 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 develops pain so that the pain needs to be controlled in this group of the uh, group of the of the of the patient for proper man management of this patient these are the some picture of grade 1 to uh, grade 1 to 3 4 so as the uh, time duration increases the uh, mucosity grade increases and some patient majority of the patient will have grade or through two or three at the end of the radiation and very rarely the patient develops grade 4 so these are the some pictures of the uh, this is the grade four toxicity where the patient there are ulcer blisters can be seen in the oral, oral cavity so um, 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 the next toxicity which we see a radiation dermatitis i will quickly go through because this usually happens at the end of the tra treatment so majority of the patient will develop grade or 1 to rarely few patient develop severe grade three tox toxicity so as we all know the patient related factor and treatment related factor as the old age advances patient with they have a poor nutritional status improve immunocompromised patient they are at increased risk of developing similarly the radiation related uh, treatment also plays a role in the uh, in the uh, uh, radiation induced dermatitis and the grading for this that is the uh, pa pa patient with with a, uh, um, a dry squamation that is grade 2 or grade 3 uh, 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 will uh, uh, have some or the so uh, uh, roughly the patient who have a uh, uh, dry squamation uh, um, uh, 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 a dry squamation will have a grade two or grade uh, three. Patient who develops a moist squamation will be grade three, and rarely the if there is an infection that will lead to those. We, we rarely see see the grade four. Majority of the patient will have a grade two or grade three toxicity. Grade three toxicity. So so uh, 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 these are the various ways to uh, 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 manage this patient. the uh, um, uh, um, uh, initially the patient present with a dry squamation and as the uh, time increases or the uh, severity increases some patient present. the way to manage is this uh, majority of the patient can be ma managed with a symptomatic and supportive care rarely some patient who develops grade 3 or 4 toxicity uh, 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 require the admission and the use of antibiotic to prevent prevent this so uh, very rarely so the most important thing that if patient develops skin necrosis or ulceration that needs to be followed up care, uh, carefully the if there is any sign of infection or patient developing any clinical sign of infection that is fever fall color discharge prurient discharge then definitely patient requires admission and use of anti and uh, uh, antibiotic so a close association with the treating radiation oncologist and medical oncologist is very much uh, uh, required to prevent all these com complication so this is one of the uh, um, uh, photographs showing so this is the area of a uh, depigmentation this is the area of a dry squamation and this is the what we call as a grade 3 uh, uh, that is a moist squamation if this continued then there will be blister formation this will ultimately if the radiation is not stopped or the chemotherapy is continued this may turn into a grade 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 4 but we rarely see the grade 4 in our scenario in some patient um, uh, who are, who have a more sensitivity towards the very rarely that they turn into so this is the dry squamation which we see in day to day practice after the ctrt so uh, in our setup we have found the use of amniotic dressing at least in patient who are uh, coming with the uh, uh, moist squamation this amniotic patch has helped us lot in in uh, uh, further uh, progression of this into four and we were able to continue the um, uh, radiation in with grade three also in some 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 patient so this is the last and most one of the important is the weight loss which we generally not recognize in our day to day body so what the literature available literature clearly shows that there is a, a, a clear cut need of a dietary counsel counseling and uh, there is a clear data which shows that patients who are treated with chemo radiotherapy and if there is a weight loss during that they have a poor poor survival so there are two or three papers which addresses this uh, this important point that those patients who have a weight loss before or during chemo radi radiation their disease specific survival was worse compared to the those patients who maintain their weight during the journey of chemo radiotherapy so that means the if you, this is uh, the paper which i was uh, discussing that irrespective of the other factors if patients who have a uh, more than 10% weight loss before radiotherapy or during radiotherapy have a worse overall survival compared to those patients who maintain their weight so what they concluded that weight loss 
both before and during radiotherapy are an important prognostic factor for five year disease specific survival in head and neck cancer cancer patient so that means uh, 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 directly, directly that is a very important role in this so, uh, similarly the, uh, another paper which lo looks towards the sarcopenia so as we all know while the patient is going chemo radiotherapy it's a catabolic state so the patient uh, uh, is uh, indirectly uh, losing the uh, uh, muscle mass with the effect direct and indirect effect of the radiotherapy and chemotherapy so uh, 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 what this paper concluded that loss of 20% pre chemo radiotherapy weight predicts the poor uh, treatment tolerance and 30 day mortality so that lifestyle intervention aimed at preventing loss of whole body and especially lean muscle mass including personalized nutrition counseling nutritional supplement dietary supplements are very important in the overall long term uh, survival for the, the, this patient. So, the, so in the conclusion, both CT and RT care needs to be continued even after completion of CTRT to prevent the long-term complication of chronic dysphagia, weight loss, and aspiration pneumonia. Why I'm emphasizing? Because all three can be uh, uh, controlled or can be prevented uh, from developing these compli com complications. And the uh, other important message that swallowing and speech pathologists and the dietitian should plays a very important role in preventing all these complications and should be involved in patient's care before starting the chemo radiotherapy, during the chemo radiotherapy, and after the end of the chemo radiotherapy. So these uh, especially should be in involved in the proper <coughs> management, the recognizing sign and symptoms of early expression pneumonia. An appropriate treatment reduces the non-cancer related mode, which I explained to you. The non-cancer related expression pneumonia is one of the most important cause of non-cancer related mortality in post-CTRT, and this constitutes around 10% of the deaths in cancer. So if, if you recognize this complication, we can prevent, we can effectively treat and probably improve the su survival for these head and neck cancer patients. So patients should be evaluated at the end of the treatment, that is CTRT, and should be considered for discharge. Only when there is no ongoing, if the patient is having grade three or four toxicities, don't send the patient, call them every three, uh, third or fourth day to see whether this is improving or not. There should be no clinical or radiological sign of expression pneumonia, which may lead to the uh, expression pneumonia if the patient goes back. There should be no active loss if the patient is actively losing uh, 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 weight, uh, even after we have to look towards the uh, probable cause for it. So emphasis on the continuation of swallowing exercises, the patient should be explained that these exercises need to be continued even after discharge at their home. The nutritional rehabilitation should be explained to the patient and their family members. This is very important that the family members should be involved in all these to encourage the patient to guide the family regarding all these things. And the most important early sign of aspiration pneumonia and need of contacting the local physician also needs to be explained to the patient. So if we did, if we prevent these complications, we may probably uh, prevent the mortality in around 15 to 20 percent, which is not related to the cancer. That what I meant. So at the end of the team work is very important. The radiation oncology, the surgeon has done the surgery, has done a very good job, but definitely the that is not the end of the road. The chemo radiation, the chemo medical oncologist, radiation oncologist. And definitely the supportive care uh, um, staff that is uh, over the swallowing speech and swallowing expert, dietitian, physiotherapist, all needs to come to the um, uh, in the management of the uh, can, uh, this head and neck cancer patient. And with their appropriate effort, we can prevent at least 10 to 15 percent death, which is not related to the cancer. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amit, uh, for uh, a very detailed and comprehensive lecture on a usually less talked about topic. I think that was a very important point that uh, that uh, non-cancer related mortality can go up to 10% or 5% uh, in this, uh, like you said. I think uh, there is one question from Hua. So if you could please take that. Can the, so dosage the question of is, can be can be doses of the CTRD uh, generally uh, 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 what the dictum for this uh, manage, managing this complication is that uh, if the patient is uh, in general if any grade three toxicity is there if patient is otherwise clinically stable we try to continue ra radiation because there 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 are uh, clear data that interruption in the ra radiation while on the on the CTRD has a clear cut detrimental effect so we don't want to stop the radi ra 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 radiotherapy so when any patients who are developing grade three port port toxicity we try to discuss with our radiation oncologist and uh, if they feel that it's still 
uh, we can delay the chemotherapy. So sometimes we delay the chemotherapy. It is in grade three. But if there are grade four toxicity, like in a skin toxicity, which is having a discrimination bleeding, then we stop the radiation also. So, so the this will depend upon what sort of toxicity we are uh, seeing in the, the in uh, uh, that particular patient and how much it is affecting the um, uh, quality of life or the general condition of that patient. So mostly in grade three toxicity, we continue radiation. We avoid one or two doses of weekly chemotherapy is there. And in grade four toxicity, definitely we have to stop all the treatment, let the patient recover for, from these toxicity and will continue. What should be, be done when patient complains of pain radiating to ear while performing oral motor exercise? Can you also please explain its causes? So I think, uh, I don't know if there any speech and swelling expert is there or not. Uh, uh, so I think the, the probable answer of this question is, is, is that uh, that will depend upon if sometimes what happens if the disease is involving the uh, uh, base of tongue and the oro, oropharyngeal part, this pain may be because, because of the uh, referred pain from this to uh, the area until unless because it's not possible for oral cavity lesion to have a um, uh, referred pain to the uh, um, the uh, ear. So sometimes when we start the uh, treatment for a oropharyngeal cancer, because of the uh, uh, radiotherapy effect, because of the, the some patient may develop pain. But definitely we have to keep a watch on the uh, um, um, clinical examination for this patient. That is there any clinically progressive disease or or, or, or not? Uh, um, uh, most of the time, uh, um, um, with the proper use of the Analgesic, there is analgesic ladder pattern. So we start with the, um, um, uh, sometimes with non-opioid analgesic. If the pain persists, then we go to the, um, the um, first generation uh, uh, opioid. And then in some patient, we have to use the uh, morphine because ultimately if there is a pain, patient will not eat properly. Patient, the quality of life will suffer. The, their their uh, nutrition stress will suffer. So we have to use the analgesic appropriately in this group of the of the of, of the, uh, the patient but definitely we have to keep a close watch our clinical examination if there is any proliferative uh, uh, growth or disease is increasing in the oro oro oropharyngeal uh, region uh you want to answer i think uh... Uh, actually um uh, first of all, this is such an important lecture and thank you so much uh, for the Head and Neck Academy group to arrange this. Um, uh, regarding this oromotor pain thing, so first of all, what I want to emphasize is that um, all kinds of these exercises and rehabilitation, this this should be started, as Dr. Amit said, that uh, when the uh, when we plan the CTRT, so once the patient is adjusted uh, uh, in doing all these exercises from the very beginning. So the results are very good and the pain component decreases significantly. So when uh, the problem is that the patient get referred when the problem is really very much you know, intense and the patient is in a uh, very much um, um, advanced stage of this uh, complications. So in that case, when we start doing any kind of exercises that gives pain, uh, for example, jaw stretching exercise, if the mucositis is in uh, grade three and we ask the patient to start doing that, that is becoming very difficult for the patient. So the idea is to um, start the intervention as early as possible. So in case uh, in ACTREG, we have a a uh, protocol that all the patients who are um, planned for radiation therapy, they um, yeah, reports to the physio OPD in yeah. the I'm first day. Uh, um, anyone is saying anything? No, Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so they come to the uh, radiation OPD on the first day of starting RT and we um, assess, we do a thorough assessment and uh, ex ex explain all the exercises and they are asked to report to us every after every 10 fraction of the radiation. They usually get 30 fractions, so um, first then 10, 10 and before uh, going to home and after completion of the radiation therapy, they have to come to the physiotherapy. And for the chemotherapy also, we uh, wish to pick up the early signs of peripheral neuropathy. So it is advisable that uh, please refer the patient to physio as soon as the chemotherapy starts. And we uh, assess the patient periodically. Uh, 
and we assess we look for all these uh, signs and symptoms of the peripheral neuropathy and all and it is reversible yes it is reversible if we start intervention early once it sets in and it becomes permanent it is very difficult to reverse it but we can definitely help the patient uh, when uh, it is uh, um, started early intervention and the radiation induced uh, um, uh, this uh, pulmonary complications that is also greatly prevented if the patient uh, comes to physio at an early stage we start the chest physiotherapy and uh, the breathing exercises and all and those who follow up they show excellent um, management of all uh, these kind of complications so pain and complications everything is um well managed if they are uh, having early intervention so this is a message i would like to give to all of the participants here please do refer the patients as early as possible even if the, when they have not developed any complications but um, that can be prevented yeah thank you mova i think you brought a very important point that early intervention makes lot of difference and all the patient in the post op or post rt setting should start these Uh, exercises and all other things as early as possible uh, i think uh, there is one more question uh, uh, dr amit you are around yes Hello? so i think the the, uh, the 20% yeah uh, definitely with the availability of the newer techniques like imrt or igrt or the uh, helical tomor therapy this per percentage number de de definitely is, is is less what we are we are saying but as i just showed you the paper uh, with the the toxicity paper even with hmrt the number is still is still there but definitely in our setting it's around uh, 8 to 10% patient that what we roughly we, 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 we can say uh, and the possible difference why why with the conformal rt this is less so with the availability of the imrt Uh, in what happens in the in the uh, cobalt uh, the, uh, the radiation field is ap or pa so that means all the structure which are coming on their way will get the ra radiation but with the imrt technique uh, i think if there is any radiation oncologist uh, uh, is there they, they can explain it better so with the imrt technique the each area uh, and how much dose of that area will be uh, 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 getting the radiation dose is very conformally uh, decided in a very precise manner so the toxicity for each group of muscle pharyngeal muscles can they they can check the plan they know how much dose is is to be given to that area so with the availability technique this number is going to be le uh, uh, is is less compared to the previously when we used to treat with the co 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 cobalt therapy Uh, so thank you dr amit and uh, all the st uh, students and uh, this was a really uh, nice interactive lecture and uh, we would request dr amit to take uh, lectures in the future as well for us and this video recording for the lecture will be available on our youtube channel and if anyone needs that link uh, we will provide it uh, i think uh, <laughs> there is another question by kirti rao i think that last question we can take and then we'll uh, round it so can uh, so what is uh, so ma'am a patient is already performing neck exercise and, and complaints of radiating pain to ear while performing oromotor who underwent surgery in general partial dosage me so relax with so kitty uh, can you please tell what is the exact question you can unmute i think dr mohua can reply this question yeah so kitty uh, can you please uh, unmute uh, yeah. actually Yeah, uh, patient is a known case of uh, uh, partial gloss. So during the surgery, it was uh, seen that the uh, floor of mouth is involved, for which he underwent segmental mandibulectomy, masticatory muscle re uh, release. So the patient was in uh, open mouth posture, post which we have advised uh, for the mouth closure exercises. So uh, while performing that exercises as well as uh, uh, he completed radiation and chemotherapy post surgery. uh post which he was uh, he was coming to the department for the oromotor exercises and while performing the mouth closure exercises and tongue mobility particularly uh he complains of pain particularly radiating to the left ear when he was trying to put his uh, tongue towards right ma'am so, so dr kirti what is the plan thing, how should i go ahead yes, yeah yeah so one thing i assume that you have ruled out any recurrence correct Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There is no re that, recurrence. Yeah, yes. So, Mahua, you would like to tell this thing? Yeah. Uh, I'm here to present our oncodegletologist, ma'am. 
Yes, Kitty. I think Mahua can answer yeah. this question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, some patients uh, actually present with this kind of pain and all. So, uh, first of all, we need to, you know, um, rule out any other source of pain. Like if it is um, only coming from the uh, uh, pathological area or if there is any. Uh, other pathology like uh, spondylosis and anything or any pathology in the ear because uh, due to chemo some toxicity happens and uh, ear pain and everything the balancing um, organs they are all affected so many of the patients get a pain uh, due to that also so we need to modify the exercises and we have to identify that what particular movement is causing the pain and there is another exercise that is a Eustachian tube exercise that is um, also very much beneficial for the patients and that decreases the pain significantly. And the neck exercises will have to be carefully um, designed so that it doesn't uh, produce lots of stretch in the area. And the patients, if still having uh, very much pain, uh, even after the modification of exercises, then they can uh, have analgesics and perform the exercises after um, taking the analgesics after half an hour and like that. So it so, greatly depends. Uh, it, it needs a thorough assessment and to identify what is exactly giving the pain. Correct. No, I think that is excellent answer. So Kirti, uh, I would again reiterate the same thing that the first thing we would have to do is to rule out the if there is any disease, if there is no disease, I think we have to see the local site. So that local site could be having some remaining ulcer or some uh, uh, that uh, unhealth, the area which has ulcer, which probably could be causing pain when the patient is doing exercise. The other reason which uh, uh, Mahua rightly pointed out is that this could be due to some uh, the joint problems. Suppose I'm, uh, uh, some uh, problem with the uh, glenoid fossa and the TM joint. And the, I think fourth uh, the important point would be the patient could be having an acute otitis media, which is quite common in the post-CTRT setting. So I think uh, we have to see where exactly is the problem. And then uh, most likely uh, we are going to treat it in a uh, uh, better manner. So I think that answers your question. With this, I thank you everyone, uh, Dr. Amit Mahua and uh, uh, everyone for today's class for quite an interactive session. Thank you so much. Uh, I will now wind up the session.